Hello and welcome to Keeping It Young Podcast, conversations about marriage, family, and ministry life. I'm Dave. And I'm Bethley. And we are the Youngs. Hey, thanks for joining us today on the Keeping It Young Podcast. Yes. And, uh, I've enjoyed so much recording these and enjoyed so much meeting so many of you. And uh, Absolutely. thank you, thank you, all of you that joined us at the uh, recent prayer Couples advance. Prayer Advance. It was just awesome to meet you. And uh, this week we are in Virginia. Yes. And uh, so uh, if you'd like to check out our itinerary online, you can uh, look it up, of course, at the evangelistdaveyoung.com site. Mm -hmm. And uh, just uh, reach out to us on social media, even follow us on social media. We usually post where we are and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. And uh, we certainly would love to hear from you. If you haven't checked out mypillow.com forward slash young, I hope you go by there and look that over. We're so thankful for their kindness to us and their support of our ministry. Yes. And also we partner, of course, with CovenantEyes.com. Mm -hmm. And if you'll go there and use the promo code DNB, short for David and Bethley, mm -hmm. the DNB Young code will get you a free month's trial of Covenant Eyes. Mm. And as we're parenting, navigating these waters and dealing with the internet, TikTok, Instagram, all that goes into that. Yes. Uh, we need all the help we can get. So check out Covenant Eyes. Look it yes. over. Evaluate it. And go to my pillow and look for Christmas presents. Absolutely. <laughs> I think it a, would be an awesome Christmas oh, yeah. present. <laughs> the towels, buy towels or house slippers. Yes. And uh, those are great. We just bought a uh, dog bed from there for our puppy. Yes, we did. And uh, she likes it. She loves and, it. And uh, it's a very nice one. We're just, we just have enjoyed the products and hope mm -hmm. you will as well. Actually, so. when we first got it, um, David pulled it out of the box and Charity was like, what in the world? And um, David said, I, I really wanted to get this because you can wash the entire thing, not just the cover. You can wash the core, everything. And um, so he really wanted to get that for Peyton, our pup. Up. And so before Peyton laid on it, Charity, she laid on it, she curled up on it, and she was like, I think Peyton has a better bed than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not true. She is, she is not deprived. People. She's she's okay, <laughs> but uh, she's very famous these days. At you know, pointing out that you know, I'm, she was just uh, came into our bedroom and in, in the RV recently, and she was between us in the bed, and it was late at night. My goodness, it was getting late. Yes. And she had school the next morning. We have work the next morning, but she would not leave our room. She was <laughs> laughing and talking and teasing and and poking and and so finally, you know, I did the dad. Okay, we're done. You have to go to bed. And then she's like, you don't love me. Uh, and, yes. uh, you know, and then she's like, you know, if, if she name one of her brothers, if, if I were, then you'd let me stay up. And well, and, and she uh, went into this whole thing about our, when my siblings were young, you guys were younger too, and you could stay up later. And now here I am and I'm all awake at this time of night and you guys are so tired. And actually we made her kids go to bed. So she's actually a little more spoiled than her siblings. And oh if my. her siblings are listening, they're all nodding their heads in vigorous agreement. Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. We are talking about conflict resolution. I think Ready we're to about in? to come to the end of the Absolutely. conflict. Absolutely. I feel like there should be like music playing or something because this has been a nice da -da -da -da. long series. <laughs> <laughs> that was not what I was thinking. More like this triumphant, like the, the battle is over kind of, oh. you know. Well, the battle will never of... be over because conflict is a normal part of living in a sin-cursed world. Aren't you glad you tuned in to hear that? That people? was encouraging, wasn't it? <laughs> Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, my goodness. Well, okay. today we just thought yes. we would do at least one final episode here and talk to you about parents and adult children and the potential conflict resolution that may occur there. Is there a possibility for conflict they're, when they're you're not even living in the same house because anymore? Because we're family. Okay. And families have to connect and get along. Yes. And when I would just start by saying that having adult children is... Awesome. It is awesome. It is. And I just, uh, I'm so thankful. We, of course, have Dave and Abby and Josh and Bethany and Matt and Kareth and even our Jacob. Yes. And we're just so thankful. Adult children are just amazing. They are on their own. That's awesome. <laughs> And so it's like, or at least they should be getting really close. Yes, they are. Right. And one of the benefits of that, it's not just that you don't have to do their laundry anymore and cook for them every day, but there is that blessing of watching them do this thing called adulting and do it well 
and yes. pay their bills and work hard. And in, in the case of our children, all serving the Lord, all loving the Lord, all walking with God, all growing in Him, it's just an amazing thing. And if you're wondering, and if our kids are listening, we are we are very proud of our children. Yes, we are. And so very thankful for them. Uh, having adult children is awesome as well because they can be incredible friends. Yes. And uh, one of the things Beth and I love is that, you know, we're friends with our children and even mm-hmm. our, our, you know, uh, our, our in-laws. Yes. And our Kareth and Bethany and David. Yes. Uh, we're, we're, you know, they're our children, but they're, uh, they're just incredible friends. Yes, we can get together yes. and you're just having these wonderful times of adult conversation that you didn't have, you know, when they were five and six and seven. Absolutely. And um, just hearing things from their perspective, it doesn't mean that you always agree on things. And when you disagree, sometimes there is that conflict. And sometimes you just have to laugh at the disagreement and know that it's just different stages of life. Absolutely. Sometimes our kids just aren't as wise and knowledgeable as we are. Well, and I, <laughs> I we we were just talking even this week about um, when we were first married and probably some of the things that we said to my parents, for instance, or to David's parents in all of our, wow, we are on our own now and we're 25 years old and we know so much. I, I know that both of our parents had to kind of chuckle after we would leave after we were a laughing. dinner. Bethley's mom is in heaven, but one of the things she disagreed with me on was that I, I grew up on Southern gospel music and I loved Southern gospel music and I still enjoy it, mm-hmm. but uh, she just was always on to me. I can't believe you like that. I just can't believe it. <laughs> and uh, just, you know, just little things like that. But I would, I would add to having adult children is awesome. And I would also add, uh, for all of us need to be reminded too, that having parents is awesome. It is. And parents that care deeply about you, that uh, would be willing to move heaven and earth to help you, to love you, to serve you. Yes. Uh, what we're talking about here is not, not this is, these aren't negative things. Having adult children is not a negative thing. And mm-hmm. moms and let's just remind parents of that. If your kids are on their own and, and moving on, all of us as parents need to remember that's a great thing. Yes. And never let that, you know, tear you apart to where like, oh my goodness, I can't believe my kids are not home anymore. No, this is what you train them for. God put you in their life to help you get them to where they're adults, where they're married, where they're serving, where they're working, where they're Mm -hmm. paying bills. And it's a good thing. And you adult children... Uh, don't don't miss the fact that having parents is awesome, even when you're an adult. It is, and and just remember that if you have parents in your life, uh, parents that are living, this is a blessing. As we all get older. Um, there is that possibility and eventuality that our parents will pass away. And so if your parents are living, that's a blessing. If your parents are in your life and want to have a relationship with you, that is a blessing. Not all adult children have that. Sometimes as they grow up, things happen and people grow apart for whatever reason. And maybe conflicts did not get resolved because they don't listen to Keeping It Young podcast. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, that wouldn't be the reason. But sometimes things happen and bitterness um, develops and can grow and you don't have that relationship. So if you have a relationship with your parents, even though as a young couple, you may be thinking, oh, my parents, they're just getting so um, older and stuck in their ways. And maybe you as a parent are like, oh, these young people, they don't understand or they don't have the wisdom. Don't think that way. Think this is a blessing. This is awesome. Sure it is. Absolutely. How do you handle conflicts at this stage when mm-hmm. your kids are adults, they're married, uh, they're on their own. Uh, let's uh, let's take it apart in two ways. Let's talk about parents. Let's talk about children. Okay. All right. And to parents, uh, Beth and I would give you four thoughts. First of all, always respect their adulthood. Yes. And and so your children are becoming adults. Respect that. Mm-hmm. One thing that that Beth and I have have observed is that three of our kids are married, and each of our children being married, each of those three do things differently than the other two. Yes, and they do things differently than we do. And so yes. they they think differently. They in fact all um, all of us live in a different place. The yes. three that are married, yes. and, and Bethley and me, we all live in a different place. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, three different states, four different towns, right? Uh, four different churches, yes. Uh, four different viewpoints, yes. And the fact of the matter is, we can respect that. Mm-hmm. Uh, we each respect their adulthood. And and secondly, parents, you communicate frequently. Mm. Uh, parents, you have to work at that. Our culture is so busy, but communicate, communicate, communicate frequently. Yes. Let your kids know you love them. 
uh, text them, even if your kids aren't responding to texts, still text them. <laughs> even if they don't respond, you know, to a mm-hmm. video, you still text, you still send the video, you still, yes. you communicate frequently and every chance you get, you connect in person mm-hmm. and we're all different. Some, you know, like our kids, uh, we have, uh, our son lives four hours away. Our other, our daughter and other son live, you in know, California you know, 1,800, 2,000 miles away. Yes. And, and so there's different levels there, but you that live near your adult children connect, Yes. connect, connect, communicate frequently. And, and then I would add to this, uh, two other things, schedule connection. Mm-hmm. That's why you plan Thanksgivings, build traditions mm-hmm. and don't, don't, uh, is this okay to say, don't freak out if one of your, uh, adult children doesn't honor the tradition one year. Right. Well, they are becoming their own person, their right. own family. And, you know, if the other parents, the in-laws are living, they have a responsibility to them too. So don't become so rigid in, well, this is always our family time. You always have to be here for Thanksgiving or Christmas or New Year's or whatever it is. Don't become so rigid in that, that you try to put a guilt trip on them because that's only going to drive them away. It's not going to bring them closer to you. Yeah, so parents, what you got to do is you just schedule, maybe the better way to say that is schedule opportunities for connection. Yes. And, and, and you just, just work at that and, and don't, don't be, you know, uh, upset if for some reason one of your kids or both of your kids or three of your kids can't make that particular connection work. Mm-hmm. You still begin to build traditions and, and even if the kids aren't there at all, mm. you can still, you as a couple can still have life. Absolutely. You can still eat. You can still celebrate. You can still buy presents. You can right. You can still enjoy life. And parents, I would say this as well, always keep an open door. Mm-hmm. Always, yes. always. Never close the door. Absolutely. I know that it can be difficult, this communicating frequently. We talk about this all the time because of the time zone difference between us here on the East Coast and our children on the West Coast. And they're working all day we are working all day, and then we usually have services in the evening with our ministry. And then when we come home, we're we're done. <laughs> we're toasted. Yeah, well, we'll come home at nine to... o'clock, and for them that's supper time. Right. So they're getting ready to have supper, and then about you know ten o'clock our time, um, they may have church responsibilities at seven o'clock their time, where right. they're they're going on visitation, or they're doing counseling sessions, or they mm-hmm. have a connection class and and church responsibilities, and yes, and and everything. And then uh, by the time they're home at nine, it's midnight our time. Right. So we do have to deal with those things, it but is, we just always keep an open door. You just have to keep working at it, Absolutely. keep working at it. And then the connection times, I know what, what has worked best for us is to say, Hey, this is what we're going to do. Anybody and everybody who can be there, we'd love to have you. If you can't be there, we still love you. And we still want to see your face on FaceTime if we can. And, and our children will do that during the day. Um, it has probably, I don't even remember how many years it's been since our, our married couples that live in California have been able to be home for Thanksgiving. They have ministries that they're in and they just cannot do it. And normally they're coming in for Christmas. And so to buy two plane tickets, that's just a lot. But every Thanksgiving, we get a FaceTime call from them. They're able to get together. So they're having Thanksgiving together. And sometime during the day, we do a big FaceTime call and we get to see everybody. So we do have that connection then. So keep the door open for all of that. Parents, don't get your feelings hurt. I know it can be easy to be like, well, why are you going there again? You were just there for whatever holiday and you didn't come to my house. Don't be like that. Don't get your feelings hurt. Respect them as their own family and just leave the door open for as many sure. communication times and connection times as you can. And, and parents, don't be afraid to build a life, um, and I say this gently, uh, apart from your children. Mm-hmm. Before you had children, you celebrated Thanksgiving and Christmas and birthdays. Right. You spent time with your friends. You you, you did things without children because you didn't have any. Right. And then children come along, and then they become the determinant factor of your life. Don't allow yourself as a parent to... To get to the point to where if the kids can't come, it ruins everything. Mm -hmm. You can still get together. If your parents are still alive, you get together even if your kids can't come. Right. If you got a brother or sister, I know we were not always able to be with Bethley's mom and dad on all the holidays, especially after we moved to Florida. Mm -hmm. But I always appreciated the fact Bethley has an aunt named Bonnie and Mm -hmm. her husband was Lee. Lee's in heaven now and Aunt Bonnie hasn't been doing well either. 
Uh, but the fact of the matter is, your parents always got together with Uncle Lee and Aunt Bonnie. Oh, right. And especially your mom. She loved Aunt Bonnie and your mom were two peas in a pod. <laughs> yes. But even if we weren't there, and in fact, if nobody else in the family was there, mm-hmm. mom and Aunt Bonnie were always together. Right. And they built a parent. Sometimes you, you have to go ahead and build traditions and things that are separate from your kids, especially right. when they get children mm-hmm. and they have children. And then, you know, they they're, they have family on the other side, too. Right. And so all the parents respect their adulthood. Yes. And that takes care of a lot of the conflict that might come up if you're just doing that first point of respecting their adulthood yes. and letting them be their own family. Yes. Now let's talk to the kids a bit. All right. So let's, we talk to the parents about handling conflicts and kids, let's give, let's give some to the adult children and uh, two things really with just a couple of thoughts under them. First of all, is respect your parents by honoring them. Yes. Never forget that honoring parents is an essential part of biblical Christianity. Yes. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which Mm -hmm. is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, Mm -hmm. and thou mayest live long on the earth. Because we are believers, one of the things the Bible teaches is that as children, we are responsible to honor mom and dad, and honor when children honor parents, God's promise is that things will be well, and Mm -hmm. it will uh, bless the days they have on earth. Yes. And uh, so you honor your parents. That's an essential part. Mm -hmm. And and by honor them, you're aware of them. You you treat them with respect. You treat them wisely. You treat them lovingly. Right. Uh, You never belittle. You never um, talk down. Uh, you, you, you just are very aware of their feelings and their needs and right. where they are mm-hmm. and you honor them. Does that make sense? It does. And I would say it's just common courtesy too. There does come a point where you're no longer in their home. You're no longer the little child who needs to obey them, but the honoring part does continue. And, and I would say that's just common courtesy. There are people in your life probably that, you would be mortified if you talk disrespectfully to them or if you were overly sarcastic to them all the time or if you just were always joking about them. You would That would mortify you. You would never do that. But you wouldn't think anything about doing that with your parents. Oh, they're just my parents. Who cares? Right. You know. So be careful about that mm-hmm. because they are still your parents and they are um, a very important part of your life. You may not see them all the time. You will only see them a couple of times a year. Maybe you see them every day because you live in the same town with them. Um, But honor is always a good thing. It is always called for in the Christian life. If you would, if if you are comfortable being disrespectful to mom and dad in a way that you would never be disrespectful, say to your small group leader or your pastor or your, your, your uh, in-laws, right? Then you're, you're not being wise as a parent because you're Mm -hmm. as a child, because you're not honoring your mom and dad. Right. Is Is that Make yes. sense? Mm-hmm. And, and then the next thing we would say to you that uh, as from the position of you that are adult children, remember that your responsibility to your parents can be dependent on two things. Mm. Number one, it's dependent on whether or not you are supported by them. And number two is to whether or not you are on your own. Mm. And we have to separate those two. Yes. There comes a point in which, you know, like our three children that are older, uh, Abby and David, Abby's married to David, Josh to Bethany, Matt to Kareth. Right. Uh, those um, uh, those adult children are different than our son Jacob, who's an adult. Right. Uh, Matt and Abby and Joshua are on their own. They are. They They're have their own home. Yes. They pay their own insurance. They yes. have their own cars. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, um, you know, buy their own groceries. Right. They go to work every day on their own. They mm-hmm. take care of their own house. Uh, our Jacob is an adult young man. He's 19 years old. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jacob is a hard worker. Yes. Ja- Jacob is a good worker. We're very thankful for Jacob. But Jacob is different than Abby and Joshua and Matthew because Jacob still lives in our home when he's not away at college. Right. We still help pay his college bill. Mm -hmm. The car he drives belongs to me. Mm -hmm. The cell phone that he's using belongs to me. Right. And as a result of that, kids, you need to think this way. Uh, As an adult, as adult children, remember that your responsibilities to your parents have a dependency to them. If you're on your own, then your primary responsibility to your parents is simply to honor them. Mm -hmm to treat them with respect, to treat them lovingly, to treat them gently. And and literally, the older your parents get, your responsibility is to care for them. Yes. And that is a very biblically mandated truth. Mm-hmm. Uh, our culture allows the government to care for our parents. 
Mm. Uh, our culture expects the you know social security to care for our parents mm-hmm. but biblically speaking the way it's been done traditionally is the family's care for the parents right and so be very aware of that even though you're on your own as your parents get older you have a divine responsibility to care for them mm-hmm. but if you are living in their home and your parents own the house and they're helping to take care of you mm-hmm. you have a different level of responsibility yes and that level of responsibility is you uh, you have to respond to them with all of that in mind. Yes. Uh, they they have a greater right to tell you things you can and cannot or should and should not do. Right. Like we there are things that I can say to my Jacob, you may not do that. Mhm. That I could not and would not say to my Abigail because Abby and David are married, have a house, right. have a job. But Jacob is still my responsibility, still lives in my home, even though he's 19 years old. Right. And and kids, don't make that difficult for your parents. If you are 19 years old and you're listening to this, or you're 20 years old, or you're 18 years old, or you're 25 years old, but you still live in your parents' house, and you still drive your parents' car, and mom still makes your dinner, and even sometimes does your laundry, mm. <laughs> then there's a different level of response there. Yes. And conflict resolution uh, 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 can, can happen when you realize that, you know what, I owe it to my mom and dad to mm-hmm. show them respect. Yes. I owe it to my mom and dad to honor their house rules. Mm-hmm. I owe it to my mom and dad to to have gratitude because they let me live in their house and drive their car. Right. And so conflict resolution is it has two angles at this stage of life. The mm-hmm. mom and dad uh, has to realize those are my kids, they're adults. Right. But the kids have to realize those are my parents and mm-hmm. I'm to care for them. Or those are my parents, and I am still under their authority because of all that they do for me. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. And I would, I would just challenge you, parents who maybe have an older child who is still single. Um, maybe you have a daughter who is forty or more, and she is somewhat on her own, but she's still, um, you know, under your responsibility. Somewhat, you would think of her. Just be very careful. She's not nineteen anymore. And if she has lived on her own, then treat her as such. Um, treat her as an adult instead of saying, hey, this is what we're going to do. Say, hey, would it be okay with you if we do such and such while you're uh, staying in my house? Maybe something has happened and she's had to come home for a little bit. I know we've heard of scenarios of this before. And that can be very difficult if your mm-hmm. daughter has been out on her own, making her own money, making her own decisions, and living in her own apartment, say, and then she's had a job change and had to come home for a little bit, that can be very difficult if mom and dad try to micromanage her again. So be very careful of that. That can cause all kinds of conflict to come up. So instead of doing that, um, parents ask questions instead of telling, would it be okay with you if we do this and that? Um, Ask questions about dinner. Are you going to be home for dinner? Um, And make rules about it. If you're not going to be home for dinner, you must tell me. Yes. Could you just let us know, please? Because then I won't fix enough for you too, or I know enough to leave it because you're not going to be in for dinner proper, but you want some later. Um, So just communicate all of these things. It'll head off a lot of conflict. But when that conflict comes, both of you, both parties, whether it's an adult child or or the older parents, the more mature parents, I would say, in our situation. I don't think of us as being old. (laughs) But when those issues do come up, just be careful that you don't allow hurt feelings to turn into woundedness, to turn into bitterness. What you want to do is if there is a conflict, if an issue has come up, you want to just... um, not confront it right away, but communicate about it, if you can, right away. Absolutely. And just take care of it while it's small so that hurt feelings don't build. Because what happens is if you get those hurt feelings going and the woundedness go- going, then it's just very difficult to have those happy family times where you can make those wonderful memories. And that there's closeness. A, yes, and there's not that closeness anymore. And there's a couple of things to avoid there as well. Avoid negativity. Yes. Avoid sarcasm. Mm. Avoid passive aggression. Mm. Um, even avoid humor if the humor uh, is not well received or is coming from a perspective of I'm making a point via humor. Right. And if you are are by nature passive, you know you're you're very apt to use pass, you know, to be passive aggressive 
or you're very apt to, you know, I'm very funny, but my humor is making a point here. So watch me be funny, but I'm jabbing and I'm trying to let you know how I feel about something. Mm -hmm. Then you're failing on both sides. Right. Because um, conflict resolution, the way to handle and have healthy relationships at this stage Mm -hmm. is to be open, to be loving, to talk things through to show respect to each other in doing so yes. and, and negativity and passive aggression and sarcasm and, and humor for the point of making a point, mm-hmm. all of that will damage your relationship between parents and, and children. It will. And you want to be able to have that closeness when you're together instead of walking on eggshells of, oh, what am I going to say? Am I mm-hmm. going to hurt somebody's feelings? Or, you know, you want to have that openness with each other. And um, I know it can be difficult as you as your children grow older and they grow away from you and they are living their own life. You can develop your own life and both of you can be going separate directions and not have those connection times and then when you get together things are said it can be it can be difficult but don't allow it to fester into a huge sure. conflict take care of it when you can and then just enjoy enjoy one another and say i'm sorry if you step out of line, say Absolutely. it. Don't be so prideful that you cannot say, I am so sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Please forgive me. Absolutely. And remember that every situation can be solved by proper communication. Yes. And if there's an issue that concerns you regarding, you know, as a kid if to your parents or parents to an adult child, mm-hmm. what you do then is you have a conversation and you say something like, hey, uh, will you think about this? This kind of bothers me. I'd like to do it differently. I was thinking maybe we could do it like this. Mm -hmm. Or it may be that I don't know exactly how to do it, but I just wondered if you would think about it so that maybe later we could could adjust things a little bit. Mm -hmm. And if you say that with a soft voice and you've been working on having a close relationship, Mm -hmm. I will tell you every conflict and every potential conflict can be solved between parents and adult children. Yes. And so it's a wonderful thing to have adult children. It is. And it's a wonderful thing. we are loving thing. the stage of life, and mm-hmm. we want you to as well. Yes. So any further thought, and we're out of time. I don't think so. I think we've covered it pretty well. If you have any other questions, we certainly can um, address this topic again. I know that we did not exhaust it at all. We at only all. did one episode on it. So if you have any questions, maybe it could come up later during a question answer time or something like that. Sure. And speaking of question answer times, mm. we would love to hear from you. Many times you have things you've been wondering about, questions you would just love to ask if we were sitting around your dinner table. We would love to answer those in a coming episode here on the Keeping It Young podcast, a Q&A. And so reach out to us and yes. uh, let us know those questions and we will add them to the list. Yes, we will. And we have a new series coming that we're starting to work on. It's going to be epic. It is. It's all about handling our emotions biblically and Amen. wisely. And that's going to be good for all all of us. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for joining us here at Keeping It Young Podcast. And I hope you have a great week and that this week you will serve the Lord with gladness. The Keeping It Young Podcast is a Bax 5 Media Production.